Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Now, right now, I just received a set of miniatures from Warlord Games. I pre-ordered these, and I normally don't pre-order stuff from Warlord Games. I'm more of a Pacific Theater, Marines vs. Japanese. I do have some Falsham Jaegers, do have some U.S. Army Infantry, Late War, on Sprue, haven't put them together yet. But I saw these and wanted them, because this box said it was 442nd Regimental Combat Team, so these are the Nisei, the Japanese regiment that fought for the U.S. in World War II, and of course were deployed to the European theater. Now the reason I wanted this set is I spent some years growing up in Hawaii, and as a kid, they played the movie Go For Broke, 1951, to death out there. They loved that movie, because a lot of people from this regiment were recruited from Hawaii. So, that was a little nostalgia blast from the past, and that's what sells miniatures. Nostalgia, really, especially some of the historics. But let's see what you get in this box. Alright, so we have our bases. Absolutely necessary. You're going to get two sprues. So, 12 men, 24 bucks, $2 a figure. That's alright. But what you'll notice is... This is one of my U.S. Army infantry frames, standard late war that Bolt Action makes. It's the same frame as what you get in the box. So you have to say what separates this box out. And so when I was going through the box, it is these little metal bits here. So they have alternate head swaps to represent the Nisei. And they are metal. And of course, this is the distinct one right here because it has a non standard issue weapon for your World War II Nisei. So, hmm. Well, so the Japanese descendants get their own headset. Very well. Now something else that I bought for three dollars and twenty-five cents, because I figure I'm having it shipped over, might as well throw something else in the order. This is the one that I liked because it is the decal set. Because there is no way in heck I am freehand painting this stuff on my little guys. So given the number of insignia unit patches that they have, I could have really just bought this instead of buying this specific set. Of course, I didn't have that many U.S. Army late war guys as it was, so it didn't hurt to get the alternate heads, I guess. I'm definitely going to be using the sword. That's just a nice touch. So let's go ahead and get these guys put together and see what they look like with the metal heads on them. I actually th think that these might be some of the characters from the movie. Yeah. I think they are. It's been a while since I've seen it. That at least explains it. They're stealing intellectual property. Very well. That's in Warlord Games. Best interest. Alright, let's go ahead and get this together. Now I finished putting together my Nisei, so I've got a 12-man uh, squad here. Now, as we mentioned, this is just a standard U.S. Army infantry frame with metal heads that are particular for this box set, similar to what they do with other specialized box sets like Merrill Marauders and uh, U.S. Veteran Infantry, where you get 12 men, $24, so $2 a miniature, and before I put these together, I got the sense that these looked like characters from the Go For Broke movie. Um, I'm not too sure. This one, the hairstyling looks like the guy. So in the movie, they recruited one of the Nisei out of Iowa, a chicken sexer from the farms. That's how he did his hair. This one looks like Sam, but without the glasses, the architect from uh, Los Angeles. And this one looks a little bit like Pat Morita. Now, 
I was looking for a Pat Morita one because if you ever watch The Karate Kid, Daniel's uh, sensei, played by Pat Morita, said he was a Nisei from the 442nd Regiment, one of the CMH uh, Medal of Honor winners. So I was looking for a character like that, but doesn't have the mustache. And Pat Morita didn't, wasn't old enough to serve in World War II. If anyone doesn't know Pat Morita, he also played Master Udon on Spongebob, for those who are younger. And Arnold on Happy Days. All right. So one of the things I want to notice uh, here is that um, when I assembled it, I did get an extra head. I decided to use all the helmeted heads except for this one. Now, I wanted to put the camera at this angle here because when you look down, and normally when you'll be playing bolt action, that's how they'll be looking at your figures, the back of their helmets, because they'll be moving away from you. So when you look at it that way, the only thing that really makes this set pop out is the unhelmeted head. So you can say, well, that head's different from the other ones. And the little um, wazishi, it doesn't look like a full-size katana that this guy's wearing on his uh, pack here. So that brings up the question is what makes these different from just a standard set. So I, I assembled this from just a standard U.S. Army infantry sprue. So we'll put these guys back to back. So on the table, I wouldn't even know the difference. And you gotta imagine you'll be standing three feet above your table, depending. So that brings the question, I can buy 30 U.S. Army infantry from Bolt Action and Box for $1.60 per model, where these cost $2 a model. So is that worth it when I can just buy 30 models and the transfers? Because the transfers are going to be the one thing that you can put on the board, put on a model and say, oh, that's the 442nd. Or that's one of the, if you want to do like something with the 100th Battalion, the Lost Battalion, can I just use regular infantry and transfer sheets? Because in the sculpting, it looks like the only difference between these heads and these heads is the pronouncement um, of the cheekbones. So um, it's subtle, which it should be. So I have to ask myself, would I buy this set again? I don't know. I've intended these, I'm more interested in playing firefights with small man teams. I already have my Nisei, so I might be done with that, and I already have some infantry. I might try painting this guy up and putting on a transfer sheet and then playing with these ones and see if I can visually see a difference uh, with my poor eyesight and standing that far away on the table um, once it's all ready. Uh, so I'm glad I bought one set. I don't know if I'd buy the second set. The transfer sheet is probably far more valuable as you can actually make something that you can look on the table and say, ah, those army guys are different from everyone else's army guys. So I think that calls a day for this review. My favorite thing out of the set is the sword. That makes my little squad leader stand out. And I could probably use it, put on some Gringo 40s for Vietnam. All right. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs. I'm going to go back to playing with my toys, and we'll see you next time.